Hi everybody! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel. Uh, I'm releasing this video as part of Vlogmas just because I'm recording it in December, but this is a video that I've wanted to release for a really, really long time. Um, I kind of had to wait until the timing was right, not only for me, but for me to be in a position to be able to talk about what has happened and what is happening uh, with my hearing loss. Hello everybody, um, I'm currently at my desk editing this video and I just wanted to, before we get into the video, I just wanted to sit down and cover off a couple of bits. And so, if you are here because you want to see what a real, normal day in the life of a business owner that is hard of hearing and profoundly deaf is like, I would really encourage you, as well as this video, to watch a lot of the other vlog day in the life videos that I've done because they are a real true reflection of what a normal day in my life is like and that is that deafness isn't mentioned a huge amount and it is something that I hold quite privately to me and it's something that I try not to talk about a huge amount and it's something that I try and embrace and lean into in part of my life. However, I picked the camera up on this specific day because I actually had two audiology appointments in one day and thought actually I'm going to create a video purely focusing on my deafness, speaking about it, really actually getting into what happened to me, how I went from having hearing to having no hearing uh, in one ear and a small amount of hearing in the other and so some parts of the video can come across more negative than a lot of the other content on my channel and I really just wanted to preemptively put this in the video because my content, my channel and who I am is incredibly positive and this is probably a little bit of like because this day was so focused on my hearing and all of the appointments actually focusing on the negative sides of deafness and so to get a true reflection of my life I would really really encourage you um, to watch lots of the other vlogs because in those vlogs you'll get to see how much fun I have, how wonderful my life is and actually how sometimes deafness uh, doesn't even appear externally in my life. Obviously internally it's always there and that's what this video is focusing on. Uh, I hope you really enjoy it, it is again it's a side of my life that I've not spoken about on YouTube before so um, I'm really hoping it gives you the insight that you're looking for from this video. Uh, I won't keep you any longer and so let's go. So I'm gonna get into it later on today where I really sit down and talk to you guys about what happened with my hearing loss, how I went from having gradual hearing loss to sudden profound hearing loss. And I wanted to give you some insight today into exactly how I manage and navigate my life as a business owner and as a profoundly deaf business owner. Um, however, it is already half, half past eight. I got up this morning and did monk mode, which is where I get my head down for the first two hours of the day from 6 a.m. till 8 a.m. I'm now ready to get stuck in, get my get a member of staff set up working for the day before I actually head off to an audiology appointment, which I'm bringing you behind the scenes with me. So let's go. Okay, so Evie is all set up and good to go for the day. Um, I have to leave her for a little bit today. So we've been working really, really closely together doing lots of training because she's a new member of staff. Uh, so I am leaving her today. So she's all set up and good to go while I head off to, I've actually got two separate hospital appointments a day at two separate hospitals at completely opposite times a day obviously. So my first appointment of the day is at quarter past 11 and it is to get two new moulds taken for two new hearing aids. I'm actually getting fitted for what's called a cross aid. I have a disease called otis sclerosis which causes gradual hearing loss in both ears uh, in young women. It gets progressively worse but then suddenly lots worse whenever you get pregnant because it's caused by hormone imbalances uh, in your body and in your ears so uh, there is a preventative operation that you can get done. When you've lost quite a lot of your hearing, you'll be offered an operation, which is where they take out the bit of your ear that doesn't work and replace it with a prosthetic piece that does work. I, three months ago, had the operation on my right ear to remove the bit that doesn't work and replace it with a bit that does. Um, that operation went pretty horrifically wrong and I now have no hearing in my right ear and only about 25% in my left ear. So today I'm getting fitted with a cross aid, which is where like hearing aids only work when there is 
when your ear works enough to increase sound and I have zero hearing in my right ear and so what a cross aid does is to I literally miss all sounds that happen this side of my head from crossing a road to driving to people speaking to like anything cross aid picks up sound in this ear that doesn't work and sends it over to this side which does work and does have hearing um the pros of a cross aid are that i should be able to hear at least like danger noises that are happening here i will be aware of them the downside is i will have no idea where the sound is coming from i hear everything i will hear everything in this side i will actually won't know where that sound is coming from. However, at this point, <laughs> I will literally try anything to improve my quality of life. Um, I mentioned a second ago that I had this operation and it failed, and I literally went from having like a little bit of hearing in both ears and wearing hearing aids to literally having no hearing uh, in one side and only a small amount in the other. Um, the aftercare from the NHS has been pretty, pretty shocking. Um, I signed hello and good morning at the beginning of this YouTube video and I literally had to like learn on the internet how to sign that. Um, yeah, like the follow-up support of just being told that like, oh, we did an operation, it failed, and now you have no hearing. I like was just sent home, sent away from the hospital with absolutely nothing. And so all of the steps forward that I've been trying to make um, from a work perspective, from a communication perspective, has just been all on us to do ourselves. Um, literally nothing from, from the NHS at all. Um, I've been told that I really desperately need a cochlear implant on this side, but I've been told that because I do have 25% hearing in my good ear, uh, that the hearing in my good ear is too good to get a cochlear implant in my bad ear. I challenged the consultant on that and said, you know, do you do you not do anything for people who, like I run a business, I have like a whole team of people, I'm finding communication really difficult, like is there anything you can do? His response was, well, is your business profitable? Because if it is, you should just pay to get this done privately on the NHS. It costs 30,000 pounds per year. Like that was his solution to me. So um, other than that, <laughs> um, the options, for like what happens next are very, very limited. So it is very difficult. So I'm heading off to Windsor shortly for this, this appointment. Uh, but just before I do that, I have to make a call to a client and I actually thought I'd show you how I do that. So um, you will have seen me with Evie. I always try and communicate face to face with people, obviously on the phone, that's not possible. And so for when I'm on the phone, I have these bad boys. So these are like really, really, really high spec beats and um, you can basically turn the volume up very, very loud. And so that's what I use to communicate on the telephone. So they're Bluetooth, they connect to my iPhone and I just call clients and have telephone calls using these headphones because they're actually, the volume in this headphone is better than trying to hold a phone to my ear with a hearing aid. And so this is how I communicate when I'm at work. And so I just need to phone a client. So I thought, I'll bring you behind the scenes. Uh, the downside of using these is that in order to put these on my head, I have to take my hearing aid out. So the hearing aid comes out and the headphones come in. <laughs> okay, so uh, headphones off, hearing aid back in. <laughs> uh, I've had a call with a client. Uh, I now need to leave for my appointment. So I'm gonna hop into the car and uh, bring you along with me. So I'm just at the hospital, I've just parked up. Um, I actually just wanted to run through driving when you're hard of hearing because it's not actually something that I ever really thought of before. And then when it, like losing my hearing so suddenly made me so, so, so hyper aware of it because up until that point I was losing my hearing gradually. Whereas because I lost my hearing so suddenly, it like suddenly made driving terrifying. And so there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Firstly, to normalize it if you're hard of hearing or deaf too. And secondly, if you're not deaf or hard of hearing just to like make you aware of how terrible <laughs> like how difficult it is so the first thing is that i used to love to listen to music while i was driving and i really struggle to do that now just just because of the level of concentration that's required to do simple things like drive a car uh the second is sat nav so i like cannot hear a sat nav i can't hear my phone even if i connect it into the car like i just it's not clear i can't hear it i get stressed and so like listening to sat nav not an option I just have to like keep looking and checking the instructions the whole time something else that's really interesting is like sirens so I spend my life absolutely terrified and like just looking out for blue lights because most people hear blue lights before they see them and I remember 
like before this happened I would hear them and be like trying to work out where they were coming from and I literally don't have that capacity anymore and so I spend my life just like checking all of my mirrors for blue lights and trying to see if people are moving out of the way if I see people like pedestrians turning around I always try and like work out what they're looking at which is a bit terrifying too uh, and then the final thing which is the most interesting is changing gear I literally think I need an automatic car because I used to change gear based on sound, like based on, oh, I, I can hear and feel, like, but I can hear that I need to change gear and I really struggled. Generally you can like feel it on the gear stick when you need to change gear and I just have to like keep a super close eye on my rev count all the time. But changing gear, following sat nav, not knowing when there are emergency services that need to get through just another fun part of my life and I actually have found that I've been getting increasingly anxious so like I don't like driving places that I've not been to before so like this hospital never been here before parking I find terrifying because I always feel like what if there's a pedestrian I can't hear them and so I end up check like completely overcompensating checking my mirrors for pedestrians because I'm terrified there's going to be something I can't hear um that a normal person would hear uh, and I just like can't react to it in time so I just I get such bad anxiety um yeah, and apparently now I can't change gear either. Um, so I'm parked up in the hospital. Again, this is a brand new hospital. I've never been here before. Uh, I don't know if they'll let me film. But I really wanted to show you guys what it's like getting moulds taken for hearing aids. Let's see. I'll take you with me. Let's go. Oh my gosh, I can show you another really fun and not inconvenient part of my life. <laughs> I don't. Also, I don't want this video to be negative. This is not negative. I just want it to be like an honest and like actual reflection of what it's like and... The fact that I'm recording this video is like actually making me realise how many things are just a pain in the butt. And here we have the face mask, aka the you can't lip read me barrier, aka the I'm gonna sit on your hearing aid and make it make really silly noises so you can't hear anything device. Uh, also this mask is way too big for me so I have to like twist the twist the straps which again just makes it really tight on my hearing aid it means that I can't do anything I obviously don't want to cover my mouth because then you can't lip read me but uh yeah hearing aids and face masks not the one not the one if anybody has a solution to this please let me know in the comments I always feel so like 50 50 about appointments like that where the service is like the worst service you ever get <laughs> like it's really really bad like so I turned up and the lady didn't know why I was there she thought I was there just to fill out a questionnaire not to get more taken for my hearing aids so I had to tell her no I'm here to get more taken for my hearing aid a new hearing aid uh, she's really nice I've actually spoken to her before like and I feel like it's not their fault like it's really hard to like trust a system where like they don't know who you are or what, what you're there for and I said to her like I've got another appointment later on today and I don't know what it's for like in a different hospital do you know what it's for and she said no <laughs> but good news is she did take my mold for my new hearing aid and she did say I might be able to get it in a jazzy colour so I'm very excited so so this hearing aid is just like skin like neutral tone colour um but they do it in all different different colours and she's gonna like send me a little colour chart so I can choose what colour I want. So I'm very excited about it. Um, Cause I think that, I guess the thought is that if you get a skin colour one, like no one will be able to see it, but actually it's this huge bloody thing hanging out of your ear. Ob obviously people see it. I might as well just have it as a new fun fashion accessory. If it can't, like, if you can't beat them, join them. It, if it won't blend in, get one that sticks out is my plan. <sighs> so. I also thought of another thing that happens while you're driving. I constantly, constantly leave my indicators on <laughs> because I don't know they're on, I can't hear them ticking. So I just sometimes indicate and then <sighs> life, this is my fun life. Um, yeah, part of that meeting was really sad because they basically did like a questionnaire of like how well, like how you're coping and how your life is and I didn't actually realise how much I have like manually adjusted my life to deal with hearing loss as opposed to like receiving help and support that I think you're supposed to get. So she said, 
uh, like how how do you know if your phone rings? And on the iPhone, there's actually a setting where you can turn your phone to flash. And that's what I have. So my phone flashes instead of rings, so I can see that someone's calling me rather than relying on hearing it. She asked how I answered the door, and we actually have the Ring doorbell app, so my phone flashes to tell me someone's at the door. Uh, and like going through this questionnaire, she's asking me all of these questions that I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have some like help with, especially if you suddenly lose your hearing. Hearing. Uh, I think you're supposed to have some support and guidance. And all of the questions she asked me, I was there like, oh, I've just sort of like fixed this myself because I couldn't live like it would be a danger to me if I couldn't do all of these things yeah it's very interesting she was super helpful but like the entire process you just don't have any faith in it because nobody literally nobody knows what's going on uh, and again I don't want this to be a negative video but I do I want to give you insight into like what it's actually like dealing with a, like something that people can't see is like Anyway, so I'm gonna head home, I'm gonna have some lunch with the guys, check in on Evie, make sure she's set up for the afternoon, answer any questions that she's got from her work this morning. Then I can get a couple of hours of work done and then go back to my next appointment, get driving, and I'll speak to you very soon. Okay, so I'm now at appointment number two. I got home from appointment number one, had some lunch played some card games with the guys, got Evie set up for the afternoon, ran through some queries that she had this morning. I managed to get some work done while she was getting some work done. I've just parked up. This is at a different hospital that's 45 minutes away from our house. Uh, again, for an appointment, but I don't know what it's for, so wish me luck. I was adamant that this video is gonna be a really, really positive one, just showing you how much is possible. As a deaf or hard of hearing business owner and I feel a little bit worried that it hasn't been that and that actually it's kind of been me focusing a little bit on my struggles and what's really difficult so I would really really encourage you to uh, if you are new to my channel and this is how you found me uh, firstly welcome but also like check out some of my other videos where I actually don't touch on my deafness at all and you probably uh, that'll probably bring out what my life is really like in a much more positive way but in this video specifically on this day as you can tell by all of the appointments because this day was so f focused on my hearing loss and what I really struggle with that's why I wanted to record this video today it is really hard and I think my hearing loss was quite traumatic having an operation that failed and resulted in sudden and profound hearing loss has been very difficult like on my well-being and, and communication with people I love um, but there's so many other positives and this video is actually one of them like I wanted to show other people that have found themselves in my situation um, firstly to give them a heads up on some things really like obvious things that I never thought were obvious before um, that I struggle with but also like just how much is possible and yeah, just to talk about it. Um, I found there isn't much content uh, surrounding women in business and like uh, deaf women in business specifically. And so you create the content you want if it doesn't exist, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. So come with me to my appointment and we'll take it from there. Hello, it is editing Rachel back again at the end of the video now. Um, this video actually cut off quite dramatically here. So I went into the appointment not really knowing what it was for, ended up having another hearing test. Um, so I lost all of my hearing in the right side and was have been progressively losing hearing in my left side. Uh, my hearing ha has dropped again significantly and that was that was the outcome of, of that meeting, that consultation was then telling me that it's getting progressively worse. Um, they're going to run some more tests and try and put a more solid plan in place. Feels like I'm trying to grab hold of running water, like it's slipping away from me and nothing that I do will bring it back and so they're running some more tests to try and really really solidify what's happening and what we can do about it so that's all going on in the background uh, after my appointment we headed off to a client we sat down we ran through their accounts uh, and then we just came home had some dinner together wrote some Christmas cards to some clients and then headed off to bed yeah the day just completely ran away with me and I just did not manage to pick my camera up again, uh, but I really wanted to tell you the outcome of that appointment. And finally, just to say thank you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me, uh, discovering and being a part of my journey. I appreciate it so, so much. Uh, again, this video was part of Vlogmas, and so if you would like to see 
who is up next in Vlogmas. There are links in the description to this video detailing every single person who's been a part of Vlogmas from day one all the way through to day 24. So check out the links in the description to this video to see who's up next. I hope to see you again very, very soon.